Hello and welcome to an introduction to WebAssembly. Today we'll learn about what WebAssembly is, why it came to be and how it works. So let's get on with it. WebAssembly, as the name suggests, is built or was built for the web. Uh, JavaScript is the major um, language that runs in your browser, but it, ha it has its own limitations. For example, if you see here on the screen, uh, there are a few examples that where JavaScript starts behaving weirdly, where uh, an array is equal to a not array, uh, false is equal to true and true is equal to false somehow, true is not equal to this but also not equal to this, and the famous banana or funan um, well, example. There are quite a lot of other examples and which are mentioned in a project called WTF.js. Um, it's on GitHub and here's a link. Um, another caveat is uh, specifically related to Node.js. For web developers, we import a lot of modules and each module of ours would import a lot of modules. For example, you want to use socket, so you import the socket IO module and that module itself would be importing other modules and these modules itself, those modules themselves would be importing other modules and so on and so forth. The problem with this is that if one of the modules that you imported has imported a module that has also imported a module and that module is malicious or somehow vulnerable or compromised, your entire application becomes compromised, which is a big security issue. On the other hand, low level languages like C give you exposure to pointers but pointers have its own vulnerabilities. For example, uh, you can access arbitrary memory. And if you consider old, um, very old C language programs, these instructions were not read only and the stack was not, not executable. So you could have code in the stack or you could grow your stack enough to, the to override the instructions and um, well, run arbitrary code in your program. And these were vul vulnerabilities. So a normal program stack consists of a frame where your frame information, return address, variables, etc., and all of this is stored in this stack, which grows downwards, and that has its own issues. Uh, there are some. There's a link here in the slides uh, if you want to read more on this or this. The third problem uh, that WebAssembly tries to solve is the language of choice versus the language of assignment. So let's take the example where I am a C or C++ developer, but I need to develop APIs. For API development, Python or JavaScript, that is Node.js, are much more easier. But I do not have familiarity with them, and that is an issue. But on the other hand, let's say I want to develop an application that requires multiple threads and the communication between those threads. I would rather go with Golang because it has structs like channels, etc., and a easy to use multi-threaded uh, functionality much better than the rest of the languages here. But what if your project is complicated and vast and needs both of these? So what will you do? Uh, one way, one example of this would be whether you want to do uh, complex mathematical calculations, which are ideally done in C or C++, but you want to do this on a web front end, while JavaScript is the choice for web front end. You can do the calculations in JavaScript, but JavaScript being an interpreted language is not nearly as efficient as C or C++. The first uh, solution that came up was ASM.js. What ASM.js did was provide a compile time target to a subset of JS. So you have JS and then you have a subset of JS which can be optimized uh, at the interpreter level. But uh, what it essentially did was you give it a C code and you can transpile as I would like to call it transpile it to that subset of JavaScript. But the problem was that C is a much more efficient language when it uh, comes to the fact that it's compiled and you were translating it or compiling it to JavaScript, which is not very efficient. And WebAssembly tried to solve this issue. So what is WebAssembly and how it works? WebAssembly uh, is a compile time target um, and it works on a WebAssembly virtual machine, WAVM. It can be loosely compared to Java and the JVM, but unlike the Java and JVM uh, that have existed for years, have to provide backward compatibility, 
and are specifically targeted towards object oriented programming WebAssembly and WebAssembly Virtual Machine do not have all of these. As a result, uh, the WebAssembly Virtual Machine is much more lightweight. A simple example of that would be a hello world, a simple hello world in both Java and um, a hello world written in another language when compiled to WebAssembly. So if you run it on JVM versus you run it on um, WAVM, the difference is JVM would take about 10 MB of memory usage while uh, WAVM will take only a few KBs. Another uh, benefit of WebAssembly would be the load time of the virtual machine. So JS, we compare uh, JS's V8A Chrome engine with WAVM. The J, uh, JavaScript V8A takes about five milliseconds while WAVM takes only 550 microseconds, which is a hundred times faster. Another benefit of WebAssembly is that it is a compile time target for LLVM. So any uh, language that supports LLVM, you take C, C++, Go, Rust, etc. All of those can be compiled to WebAssembly. And uh, as we discussed uh, previously, the language of choice versus language of um, assignment question in the previous slide, WebAssembly targets that by providing you the facility to import a WebAssembly module in any of these languages that support LLVM. So I can write a code in let's say Rust or uh, C or C++ and import it in Go or any other language to any other language. So now I'm not limited by one language per program. Also, uh, you can import a WebAssembly even in languages that could do not fully support LLVM like let's say JavaScript. Um, one special use case of WebAssembly is the one-to-one -one correspondence to textual format. What it is, is that WebAssembly gives you a bytecode, but this bytecode is designed in such a manner, manner that it has one is to one correspondence to a human readable textual format. So you can actually translate the binary to a human readable format, which is much more similar to a basic C or Java, uh, JavaScript code, and you can read through it. This helps you when you are trying to debug low level um, stuff. Also, it also helps you if your some sort of compiler optimization might have affected your code negatively. And the best uh, benefit that I find in WebAssembly is the per module permission isolation. So let's consider a simple Java program that's given here, a hello world program. First of all, uh, Apart from Go, most other languages allow you to import as many modules as you want without actually utilizing that module. So let's say I import java.util, java.lang, java.io, etc. And uh, I also have system.out here. Now, what if, and this is a big what if in this scenario, but not if you consider um, node modules in Node.js, what if one of those modules is malicious? In Node.js that can be pretty common because your module would be importing um, other modules which import other modules as we discussed before. So what WebAssembly does is that each module has to specifically be granted a permission. So let's say java.io wants to do file transfer or let's say it wants to access a file. Now even though my program has access to that file, this module will not have access to the file and I will have to explicitly state in my program that java.io module will be given file permission to this particular folder and only then will it be able to access that and even then it won't be able to access in networks or any other um, system resources. This is a benefit. So how do we, how does this work? Let's answer that next. Most of the computers that we use today are register based machines. And register based machines work as simple as this. You have an add instruction. Let's say, let's consider add as an example. You have an add instruction. You specify the output register, which is an address. You specify the input register and the second input register for the two numbers that you want to add. And the output is um, added and put into this particular register. On the counterpart, a WebAssembly virtual machine is a stack based virtual machine. So how it works is you push the numbers you want to add into the stack and then you call the instruction which would pop the stack twice or as many times as needed according to that particular instruction and then it would push the result. There are some benefits and some losses for each of the register based and stack based VM 
and there are quite a number of articles on the internet uh, specifying the benefits versus the cons of each of them. One obvious overhead that uh, a stack based VM induces is that your, most of the uh, computers these days are still register based and so you have to eventually translate this stack based VM and execute that instruction on a register based VM that should add some additional overhead. And some have argued that this might be a limiting factor going ahead uh, in WebAssembly, but at this point we do not know. And currently, um, softwares even as complex as AutoCAD have used WebAssembly to launch an AutoCAD online version, and they do not seem to have big issues here. All right, the next benefit uh, is uh, how linear memory works in WebAssembly. So unlike what we previously saw, in other programs where a st uh, stack grows downwards and the heap grows upwards, uh, WebAssembly has linear memory. So each module has a start of the stack and a current end of the stack, but it can grow. But it only grows if the WebAssembly virtual machine provides it memory to grow. So each module only stays within its own stack and does not access memory outside its own stack. This is different from the other programs like C, C++ or Java, where any um, files that you import, any modules that you import will have full access to the entire application stack, at least theoretically. So this provides much better uh, per module isolation as we discussed before. Now, WebAssembly is designed for the web, but WebAssembly has much more benefits that can be given outside the web too. Considering its per module isolation, etc., that we just discussed, it is obvious that this should be used even without the web dependency. So, a project called WebAssembly System Interface was begun, WASI as they call it. The idea of WASI is to use WASM or WebAssembly without the browser or JS dependency. So, what is the dependency of WebAssembly on browser? WebAssembly does not allow you to make direct system calls or uh, access direct files or even um, network. To do any of that, it relies on the browser. It tells, it sends out instruction to the browser and the browser does this for WebAssembly. Instead, WebAssembly system interface tries to provide the functionality of making direct system calls, which would allow file access, internet access, etc., network access that is, to WebAssembly itself. But as of now, not all uh, WebAssembly runtime support was it. Uh, Wasm time is one of those that support WASI and is scalable. It is built to support POSIX APIs, libc, etc. that would allow you to make system calls. But it is still in a nascent stage. There are very limited internal data types that are provided. Um, integers, float, etc. are there but not very complex data types. It also, it provides a feature called interface. If you are a Golang user, you know what an interface is. If you are a Java user, uh, Consider it as a counterpart to object, the object uh, class, which every other class is derived from. So interface is like a prototype which you can uh, create new data types from, but considering they are not internal data types, the uh, compile target would not be optimized for them. The next problem that because of its nascent stage is threading. It does not have stable threading yet, although the, a beta version of WebAssembly system interface does support threading, but it is still in beta. The third thing is Berkeley socket support. As of recording this video, uh, Berkeley socket support and a few other features were planned, but they are not at least stable yet. Uh, one of the exceptions that I have come across is the Lucid runtime by Fastly. Uh, so Fastly uses the Lucid runtime to provide WebAssembly system interface uh, for its edge computing nodes. Now, what it does using it is not specified by Fastly, but considering uh, it's for edge computing, I would like to think that it at least uh, has good fast network support. Um, with this, we end an introduction to WebAssembly and WebAssembly system interface.